And a warm welcome, one and all, to our stream for our Singapore Open, the final one of this entire 2018 yep. season here at uh, Asian, Games, Asian Games Fest here at Suntec City Sydney. Convention Centre. My name will be Matthew Hui. And I am Justin. And today and we'll be taking you through a total of six rounds of best of three for the tournament today. Yes, the final tournament for not just our country or Singapore, but also the region as well, really, the region as a whole. Since I don't believe Hong Kong and Taiwan for will the be having region. regions as well. Yeah. Well, Australia will have one more in uh, New Zealand. Auckland Open, which some players here might be travelling to, but that is what it is. Here will be the last one for our regional players. For most of our Singaporeans, it will be their last try to make a last attempt at qualifying for Worlds or just to take home the glory of winning an Open event. Yeah, I believe uh, most of the players uh, coming to the end of the season, most of the players have already locked in their invites. There are still a couple who have not, and there are still some that are gunning for that uh, coveted day two at Worlds as well. Well, to be fair, the number of players who have qualified this year is actually a lot lower than last you year. You qualify? Well, you qualified <laughs> last year. Oh, true, that's so true. So kind of, kind of balances it out. And uh, you have a lot of um, usual suspects who have not locked in their invites. So mm. players like Eugene, Brian Wong, all players that you could reasonably expect to have gotten their world's invite at this point. However, this will be their one last shot at it. And uh, many not just, they don't just need a strong performance, they need to go all the way yeah. to have a chance of getting that prized invite to the to Nashville already. Yeah, and we have a total of about, I think, uh, 40, 40 plus masters. So there's a healthy amount of seniors and juniors as well. Honestly, I was not expecting this level of turnout, especially at this uh, at this tournament. I didn't know we had this many seniors <laughs> active playing in Singapore. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a nice sight to see. Good to see that the talent mill keeps chugging along and not just from one family. <laughs> yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, but uh, I wasn't expecting the turnout to be so much because uh, Malaysian regionals had a larger, had a bigger price incentive. Yeah, Malaysian regionals was players. a sanctioned regionals. Mm. So it had, well, it had, it had trophies, official trophies, yeah, and an official prize money. Price money pool. Whereas uh, we do not have such uh, grand offerings here at the tournament, but nonetheless, the the, the number of players that turn out quite well, astounding. Yeah. Well, to be fair, it is, this is a very nice convention. It's a, one of the, it's a fine venue indeed. You can't see because our background is simply our regional banner behind us, but. Mm. This is one of uh, this is a uh, this is a splendid venue already here at Sangtai City Convention I mean, it, Center. It, it is a convention center for a reason. It is built to house events such as this, and the space we've gotten is also pretty pretty decent. I would say, although we are sharing space with TCG. And so far, no karaoke in the background to drown <laughs> us out, but that will time will tell. And our first round, we'll be bringing to you our returning hero, last <laughs> last last last, uh, last year's 2017 World Championships, Singapore's best hope of making it through day one, falling at the final hurdle on stream on the official Pokemon World stream yeah, to yeah. an untimely Paralysis. Arcanine, Arcanine Flabliss burn on his smear girl. Yeah, and I recall Paralysis on his uh, Feral side at one point as well. Uh, welcome Ryan Lowe against JSDO. JSDO is a newer face. He has told us that he, have to he played mostly the singles in-game format mm. for most of his time playing Pokemon. However, he picked up doubles this year and immediately made a splash. He played in his very first live event, a mid-season showdown in Malaysia, and won it. He won it all, and his team didn't even have a Mega Pokemon. Yeah, I recall him he had a Lachias. Lachias, yes, which was a rather... It's not a Pokemon you see He intended for it to be Mega, <laughs> but because he couldn't finish his game in time, he ended up having to use a berry on it, and he won that mid-season showdown. Ooh. He's gone from strength to strength. He's, he cut the, the Open after that, and even the Regionals after that. So he's yeah. cut every single live event he's gone to so far. And he's rocking the team of the Metagross, Landorus Therian, Gastrodon, Among Us, Rotom Heat, and Tapu Lele. And uh, Grandmaster Rai is running Incineroar, Gengar, Tapu Bulu, Komo, Clefairy, and the Grand Ninja. Um, I mean, Rai has proven that he is a good player, but he has not actually played in a tournament for over a year, well, I believe. Really. shows, and he's trying yeah. to bring a team which I think will serve him well in that regard. He's brought the very flowchart-based uh, Komo build, popularized by mostly the Italian players such as Arash or Maki. Yeah, with the Clefairy to help enable the support with the Frank Guard and the Follow Me as well to it's redirect attacks. a very strong attacks. half, in a sense it's kind of a half offense, half mm. setup kind of build here with the Greninja and Clefairy on turn 1 though. Mm. Because oh yeah, Mega, before the Mega Evolution Here happens. we go into the first game of this round 1 Swiss here at the Singapore Open 3 at Suntec City Convention Center. Hmm. Ryan, you think... Oh, if this team is kind of see standard bleeds being the Gengar along with either the Clefairy or the Greninja with the Bulu and Komo at the back why, and it won't be the Gengar and Greninja coming up here not, for Ryan. Why not lead the Komo at, at the start though? Because the, you, your instinct here is you want to trap the Fairy and remove the Fairy before you bring the Komo in. Ah. And here the Fairy shows his face. So it's going to have to run unless he oh. wants to get trapped in. Maybe doesn't have to run. The Tapu Lele's have been known to carry Scarf. 
could potentially get rid of the the, the lock as well, killing the Mega Gengar right off the bat. And it is the Lele Metagross combination. Makes you wonder whether the Metagross has Zen hit, but take use of that uh, Psychic Terrain. Yeah, so, uh, so on paper, Ryan does have the faster two mods. Gengar, after Mega Evolution, sitting at 130 base. He has to question whether the Lele is scuffed. Though, yes, and, is. and there are no other Pokemon on the field which have abilities that trigger based on speed. Mm. So only the Lele's ability triggers so far, and we are not entirely certain how the speeds will play out on this turn one. So Ryan might have to, but Ryan has a fairly safe protect if he wants to go for it. Although Greninja is not known to carry protect. Mm -hmm. uh, the Greninja choice is interesting here, though. I mean, the thing is, though, if that is, is that if J if GS does not have a scarf on his Tapu Lele, Ryan has no fear by and can just go for a mad block play because JS cannot outspeed the Greninja. Well, we'll see if the Lele is scarf and oh, okay, Mega Evolution after Mega so Evolution. No switch out for JS. You have to imagine he, he is holding the scarf, or else he's let his Lele get trapped here. Or maybe he's just willing to trade, thinking and that. Get going for the projects. Ryan's gonna oh. about, about to try and scout out that potential for uh choice Psych scarf kick coming in. But Metagross, Metagross is gonna protect as well. So afraid the, of the Shadow Boy. So now Metagross and Lele are gonna be locked in, locked in here. As Greninja reveals the gunk shot, and never mind scarf. I think Lele's leaving the field right now. <laughs> Gunshot does connect. Getting that will rid be the KO. The Lele, and yes. Lele revealing it is not choice scarf, not choice, and not focus sash either. And will exit the field. And all of a sudden, JS does not have any more immunities to the Komo. Hmm. It's interesting though. Then why didn't he choose to? Why did he choose to lock? Uh, leave his Lele in if it's not. If he doesn't feel comfortable, knowing that he can't yeah, outbeat the Gengar. Choice, even that he was going to be trapped next turn. Yes. And Lando comes in and, well, Lando you expect to be the Choice Scarf. <laughs> but at the same time, do you really want to stay in front of a potential Ice Beam? And, well, GS is kind of cornered because... Oh, you can actually, because Greninja is now poison type. Oh, it's so it's weak to ground. Yeah, but... So you will get KO'd immediately. At the same time, Metagross has already burned his Protect, so you're going to Earthquake your own Metagross as well. That's also true. Because uh, he actually has no... Oh, he has Rotom potentially to be immune to the Earthquake. But he can't it. switch it out. Oh, but he's trapped, you're right. Yeah, he can't switch it out. He's So unless he's holding... Oh, Potentially, maybe the special landers with the Earth Power. Uh, yeah. I, I, unless but they can only target one. Unless which means he will go down to double Greninja. Protect. Yeah, unless he Metagross goes for another double protect. And Ryan, on the other hand, can switch. Yeah. Brings and in Bulu the comes Bulu. in to half the damage of potential Earthquake. Might help the Metagross live if um, JS decides to leave. Uh, I mean, decides to Earthquake his own Metagross. Yes, Landorus go actually goes for the Earthquake on his own Metagross, but yes, Ryan gonna save it with the. Well, actually, he wasn't gonna kill the Metagross. Metagross is a fairly physically bulky Pokemon. But Greninja, the. Ground weak Greninja survives. How? And goes for the Ice Beam with the Life Orb boost. That will be the Landorus. And JS down to his last two. No Gengar needed to trap the last two now. Uh, I'm su honestly surprised Greninja managed to survive. Greninja's defenses are not that spectacular. No, Earthquake, and it is is weak. A no, Earthquake is a spread attack. That, and it is weakened by the, the Grassy Terrain. And the weakness is removed by Grassy Terrain. So effectively, oh. it became a neutral attack. And, that is, and honestly, based on the damage we saw on Greninja, that's typically what you expect to see on a neutral Earthquake. Yeah, and the Metagross does take out the Bulu with, I believe, what is a. Uh, but now beam? Gengar will come in and trap the Metagross and outspeed and trap? KO. There's only two Pokemon oh, there's only two left. left, yeah. And KO with a potential Shadow Ball. And JS, I think, Gastrodon maybe? Yeah, down to his last two. Ryan actually feeling Amongus comfortable here. to bring in the Komu. Oh, okay. The Amoongus might be a problem for. Oh, the thing is here, if Ryan carries the Dark Pulse, then that is curtains for the Metagross. Because the life of Dark Pulse at this range will KO. That's it though, we've seen Gang Shot, we've seen Ice Beam. He's confident enough to bring the, the Komo in here. I think he is carrying something that can KO the Metagross at this point. Yeah, the problem the problem comes if he can't get rid of the Metagross and Amogus does manage to spread some status and Metagross can pick off Pokemon after Pokemon. And switches aren't really safe for Ryan as well. If, if he switches in and uh, Amogus catches a switching with a Spore, uh, Gengar sleeping could be terrible. Gengar at the oh, and the combo gonna protect itself. No. Maybe fishing out the protect as from the mana gross. As the mongoose goes for powder. the rage powder. So Greninja likes going into the mongoose here for probably an ice beam or a hydro pump. pump with the life orb boost. Yeah, but it's going into the mongoose, which is not very not very effective. Still do a good chunk of damage. Uh, could have done more with the life orb boost. As the mana goes for the iron hit and removes the Greninja. A bit of a waste of opportunity. I think uh, Ryan, on hindsight, Ryan could have just boosted with his uh, with his C crystal there and ice beam into the Amoongus, mm. expecting the rage powder. So Ryan, I think, predicted a spawn is Komo slot. Uh, things actually not looking very good for Ryan though, because yeah, Gengar does kill the Metagross, but the rage powder support will protect Metagross for at least one turn. 
I and still think Ryan's in a good position because if Among Us goes for the Rage Powder, Metagross can only KO one. If he, and I don't even think it KOs. Oh wait, he will get Dice Punch before Kumo can move. Mm. I'm not sure that KOs though. As Among Us does go for Rage Powder, gonna take a probably a Shadow Ball and Kangaroo Soul Blaze combination. As Kangaroo actually goes win, for the actually. Ice win. So does slow down the Metagross, but not for this turn. So Metagross shoots, as you point out, should still attack the Komo before it can boost. As Metagross should be going for the Zen hit, but reveals he does carry Zen hit, but into the Komo. But that without terrain does not KO. Komo's physical defense, uh, fairly capable really. But does not does this pick up the Among Us though? Based on the special damage so far, I'm inclined. I'm inclined to think probably not. Yeah, I mean, it is a Z move, but at the, oh, same, but time, the same time, next it is spread. On the next turn, Komo will move first, yes. and Kanging Scales will remove Among Us, yeah, the allowing the Shadow Ball to go into Metagross. The combination of the plus one speed and the minus one on the Metagross as well, so Komo will move the next turn. Oh, so man. even if Metagross doesn't slow down, Komo will be fine. So Ryan just wanting spread damage on the Among Us this turn, and the Metagross just in case. So that should bring both down to the both Among Us down to red at least, and Metagross Barry. below oh. half. Will we see a berry? Uh, oh, that is right. The Mongols could be carrying a berry. And... Th no, no berry. Hmm. At Ryan least playing with a, fire there. Not a HP restoring berry. Could be the Oka. I mean, what, what typically do, does a Mongols run these days? Payapa, Oka. If not, the recovery berries. Yeah. Or even mental herb. Mental herb is very rare because Torn isn't as commonly seen as it has been in past years. But now Ryan does, should have the game wrapped up with a clanging skills and shadow ball combination. Playing skills is 100% accuracy, correct? Yes. Okay, so no no, no risk of no missing risk of there as well. Yeah. And we'll pick up the Among Us. G allowing the Shadow Bot to go into the Metagross. GS though. I think GS thought he had it. Because typically you do expect Zenheba to pick off the Komo. Because most Komos tend to Komos tend to run mixed spreads and typically Might. lower their physical defense. Oh, we actually do see a Flamethrower coming out and targets down the Metagross. That will be a KO regardless, so... I mean, Ryan revealing unnecessary information <laughs> for no reason whatsoever. I mean, yeah. But you do you, Ryan. You do you. Prove but at the same time, it, 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 does, it does tell us though that even if Among Us had the berry, Ryan had the game. Because Flamethrower would have finished off Among Us. Yeah, the Oka berry wouldn't even have proc there, right? It would just, Among Us would have just. No, it would proc first and then it would still just go down. Yep. So I think it was maybe an opportunity for Ryan to scout out the item. I mean, not for his sake, but for our. just for our knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I question JS leaving in the Lele in front of the Gengar at the start. There was there in front was of no Gengar way. and Greninja. Yeah, there was no, no protection as well. He didn't even lead like Among say Among the Among to redirect the attack. Uh, that was coming in. It was just it was just Metagross and Lele. I think he was hoping to just um, to just trade. He was like, okay, um, Gengar is the main threat here. Um, you can just either pick off my Metagross or my Lele, and then I'll just I'll just trade and break the lock. But he didn't count on the Greninja being able to oh he kill his Lele. And his uh and the Gengar and his Metagross just both traded protects. So Ryan took oh, the lead very early on. Attack, didn't he? Uh, no. no, he did. They uh, double protected first. Yeah, the, both of right. them protected first turn. Which led to the situation where he couldn't really earthquake safely. But then I mean Ryan saved him by switching in grassy terrain, so his Metagross hung on. Um but as you pointed out, I wouldn't have gone down to the earthquake, but um yeah, question leaving in the Lele. I think leading it was okay, but if leaving it in front of Gengar, uh especially when you're not he both out of speed. Yeah, yeah he's gonna he leave the this time. So no, he's not gonna leave the Lily exposed in the front. As Ryan gonna stick to the same, but now he's threatened by the fast landers. Indeed. And now GS also knows that the Grenade just not carrying the Poker Sash. Yeah, as he is. Have seen the life orb. So if he wants to, he wants to remove it. He could just go for turn one super power onto the Grenade. Ooh, that is. Uh, that is dangerous because you do trap yourself. And lock you into can't power. switch out. Yeah. yeah, and you eat a likely IC win. No, actually no, you won't. Because Metagross should remove the Gengar as well. Uh, Metagross, I think should protect, maybe. That's true, because Metagross is slower. Mm. And the thing here is that both Gengar and Greninja can survive an earthquake at full health. Yeah, Greninja um, not taking uh, any weakness this time. And Gengar could, is probably just going to protect anyway. But again, GS is going to leave himself in. Mm. I think it's fine at least, because he's he still has a lay there. He's going to non-Mega. Metagross. We do see a U turn coming out. KO even though it's super effective. Ooh, it does. does. KO. It's a critical oh, hit. It is a critical hit. Yeah, without the critical hit, that was not going to KO. So Ryan, unfortunately, not the turn he would have wanted. Did Gengar protect? No, it didn't. So. I see win vibes. 
uh, we haven't seen any moves yet. Could be a Shadow Ball into the Metagross, which be a, which be a waste. Icy Wind will also be a waste, although it is super effective damage on Among Us. Does he go for Icy, Icy Wind? Wind? Which would have killed the Landorus if he had stayed in. I mean, is Mega Giga's special attack that high? I mean, 170, I believe. Mean. Mean. Icy Wind is not a very high base powered move, and it is spread as well. But Among Us, yeah, does come in. Ryan takes one Pokemon down. Is this a safe enough situation for you to bring Como? No, yeah. right? Yes, I believe so, it is. And, okay, Ryan believes that too. He's probably going for a Clangorous Soul Blaze and an attack into the Metagross. And Among Us is sort of um, forced. Forced to Rage Powder yeah. or lose the Metagross. Hmm. Which leaves the Como free to set up. Which is a situation where. Yeah, he's gonna stay in with. Well, Ryan's gonna stay in with the Gengar. So they're gonna keep exerting offensive pressure onto the Metagross. Which has already burned his protect last turn. Yes. And just go for the Shadow Ball and. No Rage Powder! That will be the case. Oh, but that's onto the Monger. So Ryan predicting. Uh, predicting the Rage Powder is gonna come out anyway. As then Hebat goes into the. Should be the Gengar, Gengar slot, yeah. And we'll remove the Gengar, but Komo is gonna remove the Among Us with the Kangaroos Soul Blaze. Yeah, and with a plus one speed, should be able to outspeed the Lele at the back as well. And the. And, and the, the, the Metagross for that matter. Yeah, even the Landorus. Given that, Ooh. I believe Ryan's running a. Very max fast speed, Komo. Max speed Komo, huh? Okay. Man, this animation is so long. So, we're about to find out what Ryan left at the back, though. Because Tapu Bulu didn't really play that much use for him. And it doesn't really help against the Metagross that much. I I mean, Clefairy would be an okay choice, I think. You well, redirect. I think Clefairy would protect Komo to the point where Komo would just win the game for Ryan. Yeah, you, you redirect all the Zenhe bars, all the Psychics that's coming in. At the point, Lele will be probably forced to press Dazzling Gleam, which with a plus one special defense, I don't think GS Komo can carry Dazzling Gleam. Survive. Not on a non scarf Taku Lele. Oh. It's very unlikely he carries the Gleam. Which will make, which will make it very safe for the Komo on Ryan's side. Hi. But we're about to find out. If Lele comes in, actually, Lele will get the rain over the Bulu. Because Bulu is. We do expect it to be Choice Scarf on Ryan's side, though he hasn't actually revealed that fact yet on stream. Hmm. He does bring the, the Bulu. Bulu. So huh. He, well, he won game one, so seeing no need to adjust. And Lele will come in here, so do we see the Choice Scarf Tabu Bulu? Yes, we do. It is the Choice Scarf Tabu Bulu. Activates the Grassy Terrain first. As yes, Lele will override it. Bit of a shame though. Uh, so how much damage has the Metagross taken? Is it in Flamethrower range? Hmm. I think it is. Is Ryan but just going to press Rock Slide is the other question. Oh, 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 does he have Rock Slide or Como? Or oh, Tabu Bulu? Tabu Bulu. Oh, okay. I mean, you can't kill with uh, the can't kill the Lele with Wood Hammer anyway, right? Must well fish for I... the fridge. I don't know. I actually don't know. He has to. He, can kill Tabu Lele he also has to know that. Uh, Lele trouble into the Metagross. Is that going to be enough though? With the boost, no, Ooh, it's not going to be quite. enough. But Wood Hammer should remove the Tabu Lele, barring some. Oh yeah, he goes in the Tabu Lele. Doesn't get the KO either. Nah, grassy, grassy terrain is much is needed. Oh, but then Hebat is gonna miss onto the Komo, but. That should be the Shattered Psyche onto Komo. No way Komo survives that even with the boost. Psychic Terrain booster, yeah, it's, uh, it's not long for the world. Honestly, if he had Clefairy here... Clefairy would have won the game for Ryan. Yeah. Because GS has no easy way to remove it. Oh, actually, he does have Metagross to Iron Hit. And Metagross did survive to the flip but tour, the even after the boost. The alternative is that the Clefairy could protect and maybe Komo can hang on with the Frank Guard. Perhaps? Shattered Psyche? No, not in terrain. Uh, okay. Tabu Bulu was the, not the option for Ryan here. I, I think it was, but it was it has to remove the psychic terrain. Um, but he didn't give it the Imagine if he had been in Cinero here instead. Mm. He tipped it onto Metagross and immune to Tapu Lele's strongest attacks. No fake out though, is the is the issue. I but yeah, you, 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 you protect and then you flare blaze the Metagross, yeah. So we will be moving on to a game three. JS Especially to now come that back. you've seen the Metagross carries the Zen hit butt. He did he saw that in game one already. Yes, and you do wonder, does he carry stomping? I believe we also caught an ice punch from the Metagross in game 1 onto the Tapu Bulu. No, that was Iron Hit. Iron Hit? Yep. Okay, ice okay. punch wouldn't have KO'd. So, Zen Hit but uh, Iron Hit and Protect. There yeah, is we haven't one seen more. that last slot. Could be, could be Ice Punch or Stomping. Yeah, yeah, if it's Stomping, then Incineroar's not safe. Down to the last round. Hmm. So, how does Ryan adjust from here? I think you just leave Clefairy Komo. Yeah, I... Or Clefairy Genga. Clefairy Genga seems the safest. Clefairy is the answer. Clefairy Lead is the, has yes. to be the answer here. I think GS did a pretty good job. He managed to re adjust. Not, I mean, as you mentioned, say preserving the fairy at the back, and his Metagross didn't go down as well, and put in a lot of work to get rid of the Gengar at the start. Uh, the miss on Komo was unfortunate, but in the end, it turned out to be irrelevant. 
as uh, Shadow Psyche, as you point out, was more than enough for the Komo after the boost. Komo could have protected because we did see JS double into the slot. Yeah. Well, Ryan oh, doesn't yeah. really... Or if Ryan carried Rockstar, he could have tried for that. <laughs> okay. Not quite the cleanest of game plans, but... Oh, he did lose it. Oh, there we go. Incineroar Greninja coming out for Ryan in Game 1. Game 3, sorry. Metacross, As Metacross Landris hit the field, and Landris is going to be intimidated. Going to do pitiful amounts of damage. So, likely going to want to U-turn out. So, interesting adjustment for Ryan here. Probably dropping the Tapu Bulu mm. and leaving Gengar and Komo at the back. I, I don't even think a U-turn is safe for Landris because you have to worry about fake out Ice Beam into Landris. Um, probably a straight switch into Tapu Lele would be ideal. Then Metagross could just go for the KO on Greninja, perhaps? I'm not sure what Metagross can do to KO Greninja. Mm. If it turns into Ice Time, a well timed Iron Hit could take it That's off the true. field. But there's, uh, That's true. That's about it. Yeah, that takes a bit of prediction. Or he could reveal Stomping and just go for the Incineroar, perhaps. That doesn't KO, though. Yeah, not I know. As just damage is. get as much damage as possible. And Incineroar is a new Pokemon. We have yet to see whether it's Assault Vest or Berry. Uh, or life off, oh no, sorry, life off on Great Ninja. Yeah, Ren not wanting to take the fake out Ice Beam play. Goes to double lay to block the potential fake out and take uh, Ice Beam fairly comfortably. Oh, is he a fake out or a flare blitz? Yes, oh. Metagross is going to Mega Evolve here. So, since the Intimidator is already on the field, no reason to preserve the non Mega ability. What do you think Ryan has at the back though? Komo? I think it's a Komo Gengar. Incineroar does go for the fake out. Ooh. Do we see the Ice Beam as well? It yeah, is we the, the Ice Beam. the double up. And that should be the Iron Hit KO on Great Ninja. Since the Greninja is turning itself into Ice type. And we'll do about half to Lele. With the life up. As Thin Hebba comes out. Oh, and Greninja, Greninja avoids the attack. That was unfortunate. Would have definitely killed in this terrain. Yep. But that's why Thin Hebba has been dropped by most Metagross players. Honestly, he should have just gone for the Iron Hit. Uh -huh. I feel. Definitely. Because Greninja is going to turn itself into a type that doesn't resist you. Unless he feared the Hydro Pump. But if Hydro Pump had gone to Metagross, he might have gone down. So... That didn't seem to be a that didn't seem to be a that doesn't seem to be a real issue with pressing Iron Hit. And he does switch out Lele again, has to preserve it for the Como at the back. So we do see another Intimidate come out. Though Ryan can just ice keep that slot again. He has no reason to gunk shot. The the lane is already below half. Yeah, will we see? And we do see another ice beam come out. And JS losing the Lenderous strike to a kind of obvious ice beam. Because you do think Ryan has the Metagross covered with Flare Blitz this turn. Yeah, and we saw the damage on the Lele, it was already half. You know, just pressing Ice Beam again would guarantee a KO. Yep, then he will land, will remove Greninja, but he trades the Metagross. Yeah, not only that, he does get some damage onto his own Metagross as well. Uh, oh he wait, he did intimidate the Incineroar twice. twice. So he will hang on. That's still a lot of damage though. It's now within Shadow Ball range, easily. Hmm. And for that matter, within plus one Flame Thrower range. Especially after a Krangorus. Still not safe to bring Komo though, I think. Gengar with the Lele in, in the back. Uh. Yep, here's Gengar. Oh. Incineroar is still at minus two, so he might want to preserve that. So it's going to be a bit of a dangerous play to switch the combo in. Yeah. Oh, for an uh, overcoat combo right about now. <laughs> well, JS does have a play here where he reach powders and then he pass into the Gengar. So Gengar likely to protect, you think? So it will give yes. a very free turn for JS yes, to exploit. I, I think a protect is coming. And uh, Ryan has to tread very carefully because the terrain is psychic and he has no way to change it. The so thing here though is that Ryan can probably get away with losing Komo this turn because I don't think Komo is the solution to closing out this game. It's clearly Gengar and Incineroar to remove the Metagross. It is going to be another and protect. Yeah, it's going to be just going to expose himself here by wasting the turn on a protect as Paul goes into the Komo. Ooh. Yeah, if only he were overcoat, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> this is where Totem Komo will come in handy. But then again, your opponent can see that it is Totem and they wouldn't be so deaf as to spoil into it. That's uh, actually a pretty good read by JS though. Um, is it really? He could have just KO'd the combo with a Zen hit butt. He has to be worried about Gengar going for Shadow Ball. Then he didn't really boss. make a read then, he just made a safe play. Mm. And another Intimidate comes in again. Oh, I guess hit. Okay, Ryan has to sort of wait out the psychic terrain for an any of the attack drops on uh, Metagross to be meaningful, I think. I'm, I'm still surprised he didn't switch the Gengar out. Because he's not going to kill the Amongus this turn. He's going to Icy win, I think. He, he's No, he's going to try for you. He's going for Shadow Boy into a Rage Power into so he's going to be fishing for uh, Zen Hebat Miss again. Stomping he Tetra. Stomping. Into Gengar? Into Gengar. Doesn't want to risk the best Zen Hebat. Not will survive. Mm. So Intimidate being quite timely. Imagine if we've gone for Zen Hebat. No, he's going to connect it. That's yeah. the thing. And he's kind of 
a bit. He's been burnt twice wary. by yeah. it already. He's already missed two. Well, don't let's not forget that GS does have Lele at the back as well. So, I think if any players can convert anything here into a KO, they should be able to come out ahead. More importantly, is GS. What is Ryan with? doing? He fixed out in Saki terrain, and that should be the game. Um. Okay, we do see a shadow wall once again into the Amogus Rage Powder. And uh, something natural. Go KO again. the Gengar. Leaving it to be Incineroar and Komo. No, it goes for the Incineroar. So Ryan gonna have one more lease of life. So I'm not even sure one more stomping with KO. Was, I think he was predicting the... Jess was predicting the protect on the Gengar. That's which was true. why he went for the uh, Incineroar. And now Ryan kind of has an Icy win guaranteed KO on Among Us. And chip on Metagross. Mm. And forces Jess to pick one target. I think... I think it's fine though, because if you get rid of Gengar, then Lele can come out to play. And Lele... Lele can't 2v1 though. Uh, not only, but I do expect the Metagross to survive. Oh, actually no, the Incineroar did reset his attack And Lele is down to half. Yeah. Hmm. Well... I don't even think Lele can do 88 damage to Incineroar, if you're being honest. We've okay. seen that he doesn't have the life orb. Plus, perhaps, damage roll, critical hit. If it's a salt vest, that's not going to be enough. Mm. Bit of a waste of opportunity. Ooh, I don't agree with this play. I think that's not, I, he has hope Metagross protects here, and he doesn't. If Stomping kills Isinor, Ryan will lose here. Yeah, it all comes down to what GS decides to target with his Metagross, and it is the Incineroar. Will it be enough? Yo, not, not quite. And he does reveal the, the berry. <laughs> so Ryan not running the assault vest, which also means he probably gets killed by the double lily. But we'll see how that goes. As Flabliss will come out here. And he does reveal Yorker Berry, but it's too late for Among Us. He's at too low health, and will go down. So Incineroar takes a little bit of recoil. And now Ryan gets to play the Guess Who Protects game next <laughs> time. Which, honestly, from the years we've known Ryan, is a game he enjoys. Too much for his own good. <laughs> he is... I mean, as mentioned, la, whichever Pokemon is able to convert any damage into kill should have the upper hand. So Ryan... Especially having the faster Pokemon on the field with the Gengar can just take his pick. Does he want to Slash Bomb the Lele? Does he want to Shadow Bomb the Metagross? He just Shadow Bomb either. Yeah. So. And Incineroar can pick off Metagross as well since he's no longer intimidated. And at the back, you do have a Komo that is out to play. Although Komo does not, I think, ideally want to fight Lele or Metagross in this psychic terrain. I think Ryan still will win with Komo though because he does outspeed, I believe, and will get a KO with two flamethrowers. You do see the protect Metagross. from Metagross. Where does Gengar Shadow Ball go? Gengar goes for the Shadow Ball into the protect from the Metagross. Where does Lele's attack go? It's going to be a psychic into the Gengar. I hope. Yes, into the Gengar. Removes the Gengar, and Flare Blitz into the Lele should remove it as well. Hmm. Leaving it going to be. It's going to be Komo and Incineroar against the Metagross. I don't think JS has a way out of this. Again, Metagross can only target one. And both of these mons, if he goes after the Incineroar, Komo boosts and kills the Flamethrower. I think he has to get he has to kill the Komo and hope that Flare Blitz doesn't kill Metagross. No, Flare Blitz will kill Metagross. That yeah, was a minus two Incineroar. That, that, that's why I said hope. Hope. But uh Not yeah. Mention that you have to land. Oh Komo's Komo is asleep. asleep. Oops! Okay, so something Nitrum. Uh that's gonna be the KO. As Komo takes his first turn of sleep. Ooh, which makes Ryan's play even more bizarre, but okay. Ooh, Amogus actually might help JS win this game. Zen Hebat needs to connect here, and uh, Komo needs to remain asleep. Although Metagross is at minus one. Yes. But Komo needs to wake up this turn. Well, we'll see. And Zen Hebat connects in the terrain, even with the Intimidate. It's gonna be enough. That's the KO. And yeah, Komo will go down. And uh, this is why you don't fake out in Psyche terrain. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a... A wasted opportunity, you have to say. Imagine if he had uh, gone for something else, maybe a flare blitz on the Metagross, taking it out of the picture. Maybe, did he run out of time? No, right? No, I don't. he just went for it confidently. I'm nah. gonna fake out flare blitz. I'm gonna nah. fake out Shadow Ball this time. Uh, you, well, you can't say that it was uh, wasn't an entertaining series, to say the least. Uh, right, choosing not to adjust the four he brought. Well, well he did actually. He's general coming in for the last game, which was the right decision. Yeah. I sort of, I sort of agree with your analysis that I think Clefairy would have been better, but that would have uh, relied a bit more on Como setting up. I think if he had brought in like Clefairy, uh, Como, he could force the setup better and perhaps just punch away through. Or you could, or you could not fake out in Psychic. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, well, it's easy to harp on the misplay. In front of two Pokemon, weak to ah. Blitz. 
Yeah. And which neither of them can KO you. Uh, absolutely bizarre play from Ryan. Yeah, but I mean, props has to be given to JS as well. He did manage to adjust to Ryan's uh, plan in game two. He and, just uh, managed to avoid uh, heavy damage in, from, from ga the game one. Because we saw in game two, Ryan kind of set up his ideal end game position, but he didn't have the chip beforehand. He needed Metagross to be a bit lower to go down to Flamethrower. He needed Lele to be a bit lower to go down to Woodhammer. Yeah. So he just. Ryan got what he wanted, but JS was careful to preserve his, his end game so that they didn't take too much chip damage from Ryan. Since he did, since uh, we saw Ryan got caught early and lost, lost his Greninja in game one, yeah, they took a crit. It, had be, it has to be mentioned that it was a crit there. Since the Greninja and since the Landorus did U-turn into the, was it the Lele at the back? Amungus. Onto Amungus. the Amungus, which was taken an Ice Beam, mm. a Life of Ice Beam, could have taken out 70, 80 percent of Amungus health. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that crit, that crit was pretty important, given how game two played out. Since Landorus does not KO Greninja, and and that spawn on the on the Como, it has to be said like. I mean, we were all like, okay, Komo's gonna steal the game, then Komo comes out, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm still taking a nap, Ryan, so... Yeah, that, that, that spawn really... That was, so, I think yeah. is that, what on earth was Ryan doing leaving the Komo exposed that turn? I believe that was the last time of Saki Terrain, wasn't it? Um, he switched, I b if I'm not wrong, it was a switch out. I believe he was switching out the Incineroar to reset the attack. No, no, I think, no, no, the last, the very last turn. Ah. He didn't even try for the protect. He just stayed asleep, going for the attack and got KO'd. Given that... Well, unless there were two turns of Psychic Terrain to go, then maybe, then sure that you have to survive just, anyway. Just, just double protect lah. Well, uh, no, you're better off trying to dodge the Zen, I think. Or hoping you survive, since it is, it was intimidated. Yeah, a minus one. Uh. It's, hard to, it's hard to say because, but if it was one turn of Psychic Terrain left, then that was a questionable play, but in the end, because he might have woken up. He didn't even try to wake up that turn. He just took the hit and went down. Yeah, well, hoping on the miss, I but think. But even if you had tried, he might have stayed asleep anyway, so... Could be a moot point. The the Brown Ryan was playing himself into that position in the first place. Yeah, the highlight of the game was by sticking out in psychic terrain. Yeah. Where's the where's the where's the horn man? Uh, sorry, the the, the pew pew pew. Yeah, I mean, Como is soundproof lah, so he probably can't hear it lah. But <laughs> Not even, even Tong, you was shocked to see the pickup go off in psychic terrain. I mean, by the end of 2018, uh, Ryan played uh, Tapu Lele last year. He played Pharaoh Lele to block Fake Out onto Pharaoh Mosa. And there he is faking out in Sahih Terrain. I think it's I think I think it's one one year of inactivity. It's, it's like, oh my goodness. It's one year of inactivity, Matthew. So Ten he's, he's very rusty. Let's see if he can dust off the rust for the subsequent five rounds and actually make it into top cut. That'll be something to see. Well, and he's running Hydro Bomb Greninja. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, but congratulations to GS. Yep, uh, GS yeah. moves on. On on track for yet another top cut at a major event. So we will move on to interview with JS, so stay tuned. Welcome back. We are here with the winner of the first round you have witnessed, JS. Congratulations on your win. Thank you very um, much. Yeah, I, I have to say that although you did take a loss in the first uh, game, I was impressed on how you managed to come back in games 2 and 3. So, were there any right. sort of... Uh, what what were you thinking going into game game going into game 2 and 3? Right. Um, I basically... Ha I mean, letting Tapu Lele go in uh, game 1 against the Gangsha was a yeah. huge mistake. Yeah. So, um, I'm not really sure... I can't re quite remember what my thought process there was, but it's definitely a pretty bad play <laughs> for game one. Uh, game two, basically I just had to target the Greninja because the Greninja had on his team had the most uh, threatening coverage mm -hmm. against me. So getting rid of that early on, uh, the Como was not a huge threat to my team, especially because I have Metagross with Zen Headbutt and Tapu yeah. Lele. And uh, if I can get a Spore or a Clear Smog on it with Amoongus, then it's pretty much not, not threatening at all. Yeah, I, I guess so Clear Smog would have been... Yeah, and you didn't really fear the, the flame throw coming from the Como since you did reveal the Oka Berry as yes, well. Yes, yes, I could divert that as yeah. well. So I, I guess most of what it came down to in that round was that most of the damage output was coming out from Ryan's side and you had to sort of find ways to get around that, which you managed to do in games 2 and 3. And pretty I have much. to say that the Spore coming out from Amoongus in, uh, in game 3 especially was Quite crucial. Quite crucial. Yeah, yes. I mean, me and Matthew were talking um, like, oh, Komo's gonna come in. He's gonna say, oh wait, Komo right. is still asleep. Oh, okay. Well, right. Jess is still in this game. Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much had to uh, win the Protect Mind game at the end there. Yeah. If his Gengar had targeted my Tapu Lele, instead I would have lost. Yeah. So okay, talking about your team, were there any sort of uh, top processors were building this team? Were there any like uh, favorites or preferences? Um. Well, this is the same team that I ran uh, last week at the Malaysian Regionals. Mm. So you know, it worked out for me there. I thought, mm, I'll just go with it again. 
I'm pretty much here, you know, just to have some fun. I locked up my World's Invite last oh, okay. week. That's nice to hear. So, um, yeah, just, just here to have some fun. Hopefully, get another top cut. Yeah, well, it is. I guess it is nice, even if you don't know the CP, coming to practice in a tournament yeah, could yeah. be valuable experience. It is good for, for experience. Yeah. Yep. Speaking uh, of Game 3, um, I didn't like that play that I made with the Lando. I switched in the Lando straight into an Ice Beam. Yeah. But I re I've... It was really like a high risk, low reward sort of play. Yes, yes. I thought he would definitely switch out Greninja, so I thought get another Intimidate on uh, Incineroar. Ah. But you know, he just straight went straight for the Ice Beam because I could have just protected lately and uh, killed Greninja. Yeah, because there. from the outside point of view, there was no reason for 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 Ryan to switch his play because based on the damage there already, Lele right. would just go down to another Ice Beam. Ice so beam, just yeah. Ice by me, but Ice Beam me to that yeah, slot. I, I thought the protect was like too obvious, you could say. Mm. But you know, there was really no reason for me not to just do that. So. Um, well, I won the game, but <laughs> a few a few mistakes. Yeah, well, regardless, y as you point out, you did win the game. There could have been... I would say you were more at a disadvantage than, than, than the matchup actually let on. So kudos for you Maybe, for pulling yeah. ahead. So, and uh, good you. luck for the rest of your rounds and for World as well. Thank you yeah. very much. I'm just disappointed I didn't get to see Latias today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another time. Yeah, so stay tuned for round two.